conversation with Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, would you engage in conversation with Senator Carlson? Yes, I will. Senator Chambers, what's the date today? The date? Yes. Today, according to the calendar up there, is May 3rd, 2007. Okay, I'm learning. See where I can, where I can see that. Well, yeah, pay attention. <laughs> today, I have been in the legislature four months. More or less. I can button my coat. And I'm proud of you. I don't have an extra piece of material in the back of my pants. Okay. I'm hungry. I understand that. And when I get through with you, I'm going to go have a bite to eat. And I'm not surprised at that. Okay. I just thought I'd indicate that. Right. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the legislature, whether people know it or not, whether people care about it or not, there is a lot of work that needs to be done on this A bill. And where are they? Stuffing their faces. Feeding their faces. Not you, Senator Fisher. I can sense you in the room even when I don't see you. I know you're here. But where are they? We're dealing with a bill that they all said was so important they voted cloture so they could get through with it. And now we're dealing with the funding bill. You mean to tell me that a bill which is designed to fund a bill that they cloctured, I think I see Senator Dubois over there under the balcony, and they're not going to be here to deal with the funding bill, and the funding bill is wrong. It is wrong. What do you think I was asking those questions for? to try to get the rest of you to read a bill that's about three quarters of a page wrong and you would have seen long that it was wrong. Why do you think I ask about Tiosa? I like to ask Senator Nelson a question because he's a brilliant man and he's a lawyer, but he wasn't smart enough to run out of here and eat with the rest of them. Senator Nelson, I'd like to ask you a question. Senator Nelson, is yield to a question from Senator Chambers? I will yield, but I warn him that um if I have to go more than another 15 minutes without food, I probably will collapse. Senator Nelson, your name is not friends, so I promise you it won't be 15 minutes. Thank you, Senator. Are you looking at the A-Bill? Yes, I am. Are you a member of the Revenue Committee? No. Did you vote for cloture? Yes, I did. Do you think the bill that would fund that bill you voted to cloture is important? Certainly. Where is anything in the bill that relates to Teosa? I don't see anything described there as Teosa. Oh, well, okay, the Tax Equity Education and Educational program Opportunities Fund. Program 158. You're right. Yes. There's nothing in the bill that this would attach to, is there, in the bill itself? Uh, I'm sorry, the question again? Okay, there is nothing in the bill itself that this appropriation would fund. Do you agree with that? That's, I believe so. That's correct. Yes. So, so why is it in this A bill to fund something that is not even in the main bill? That's a good question, Senator Chambers. I know, and I'd like a good answer, Senator Nelson. That's why I called on you. <laughs> I, I did not draft the uh, A bill, so I, I, I can't speculate on, on why that's uh, not in there. If I hadn't read the bill, maybe I wouldn't be troubled by these issues. Would you agree? I would agree. Having read the bill, do you think I have an obligation to be troubled by an issue such as this as a member of the legislature? Uh, probably, yes. So I'm discharging my obligation by being troubled. Would you agree? Yes. And that's all I'll ask of you. And you're free to go hunt your lunch now, Captain, if you, would you, would you so care desire. To, would you care to join me? Oh, no, thank you. All right. I, don't, I don't eat after 3 o'clock. All right. Thank you, Senator Chairman. Okay. And as a matter of fact, before I continue, I'm going to tell you all something that happened during the, one of the wars. This particular unit had a priest as their chaplain, and they were in the thick of a very hot firefight. And in order to keep the troops' morale up, this priest told them, if you happen to die this afternoon, you'll be taking supper with God in the evening. So the troops had a lot of morale, and they were ready to fight. Then they looked up, and they saw this priest running as fast as he could the other direction, and his robe sticking out straight behind him. They said, Father, Father. He said, What is it? One Hollering minute. over his shoulder. They said, 
You told us that if we died this afternoon, we'd be supping with God tonight. Well, what are you running for? The priest said, well, I never take supper. So he wasn't going to be there. Everybody's gone to supper. And we have a serious issue to deal with here. And it is going to be dealt with. But who raised When this bill came up and was read for the first time by the clerk, we were told there are no amendments. So I have to presume, don't I, that the form of the bill is reflective of what's in the underlying bill? I'm entitled to that. I'm not on the committee. I don't have to draft amendments. 367 is not my bill. I argued about it and discussed it all this time. Senator Friend spent all that time talking, but he doesn't read the bill. Time. Thank you, Mr. President. Question from Senator yes. White. Yes, I will. Senator Chambers, would you be kind enough to describe some of the conditions of poverty that exist in your district and how a more a progressive taxation system could uh, help alleviate those conditions? Certainly. I think it's clear from what Senator White said this time he spoke and at other times that a reduction in the sales tax of a half percent is not going to solve the problem of poverty. But because you're living at a margin and sometimes off the margin where these small amounts, relatively speaking, can mean the difference between being able to pay for something you need, and we're not talking about food, and not being able to pay for it. When you live in an area of the city that is not well served with public transportation and you have to get some knockabout rattle trap car as we call it, it is more expensive trying to keep that thing running than it would be to purchase a halfway decent car, but you can never get enough money at one time to purchase a halfway decent car. Time. So you're always oh thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Since I have several things working here, I have to get this correct. What I would do in my amendment, which would stand at $99 million, is to strike $99 million and insert $95 million. I am reducing the original amount in the A bill from $100 million to $90 million. Reducing that amount by $1 million, as my original amendment would do, is not anything substantial. So I'm going to reduce that amount by $5 million. And I'm going to attempt to make other reductions you see, there are people in this legislature who think they're very smart, but they not, may not be quite as smart as they think. There is an amendment being proposed to correct a deficiency in the A bill that ought to have been caught, but it wasn't. I was not the first one to speak on this bill. Whoever spoke first had the opportunity to point out the fact that the A bill was wrong. So I began to ask questions because in that format people might tend to pay more attention and wonder why in the world am I trying to trick the chairman of the judicial of the edu of the revenue committee by asking questions about the Tax Equity and Educational Opportunities Fund. When, in the minds of most people, LB 367 has nothing to do with that at all. But I, nobody scratched their head and said, well, what is going on here? So they thought of it as a trick question. But it was to call attention to something in the bill that is not as it should be. Well, some people think that you cannot discussing a bill for eight hours, especially on select file. So who will move to cloture? Senator Jansen, because he's the chair of the committee. Only the chairperson of the committee can make a motion to cloture a bill. 
Well, now, if he cloches LB 367A, it's going to contain Section 2, which talks about appropriating money for TOSA. If he doesn't get to Section 2, and we've discussed the bill a long time, and everybody's tired, and they tell him cloture it anyway, then you cloture the bill, because you're sheep. Then you vote to advance it, because you're sheep. And you then have a bill appropriating money for something that is not in the bill. You think I'm dumb, don't you? And you think because Senator Friend has told you that I'm old, that my brain's not functioning. My brain is programmed before the day starts as to everything that it's going to have to do. I don't have to lie down and kick my feet up on a couch in there to be asleep. I'm on automatic pilot right now. The parts of my brain which would be conducting intellection or rational thinking is asleep. My brain is asleep. The part of my brain that is operational is on automa automatic pilot. It's just doing what needs to be done. It's reacting to what happens here, and I don't even have to think about it anymore. But I know that there are people on this floor who have strings pulled on them, and they're going to teach people how to put me in my place. They don't have to cut a deal on a half percent reduction in the sales tax or a quarter percent reduction because they can outfox me. They got the underlying bill closure, didn't they? Yeah, they did. But now the funding bill has been delivered into my hands. And how are you going to get to the amendment that he needs when my amendments are going to prevent that from happening? How many amendments can I draft to my amendment, which starts at $99 million? I'm not going to do it a dollar at a time. I'm not going to write 99 million amendments. It's not going to take that long to get us to 11.59, let's just say midnight. In five minutes, I will have only six hours to go. Six hours to go. Senator Friend is sitting down. I don't sit down. I'm, I'm standing up. And I'm going to just continue to hammer on this issue. To me and the people that I'm concerned about, the sales tax is, is, is of extreme importance and consequence. In the same way that Senator Jansen has raised his back and he's not going to agree to any change and he's going to fight for what they've got, as messed up as it is right now, I'm going to fight for what I believe in and I'm going to do it under the rules. Do I have 40-something people supporting me? No. Do I need 40-something pe people supporting me? No. What do I have? The rules and that part of my brain which is the top layer of the onion for the purposes of the analogy. What kind of problem would you have if I went below that non-intellecting layer of my brain and got down to where thinking occurs? What does my amendment do? It changes the $100 million that is proposed to be appropriated from this, by this bill to the property. I want to ask Senator Jansen a question. Senator Jansen, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Jansen, would it be all right with you? Oh, Senator Langemeyer is gone. Okay, so I'll ask you. The language of this bill, and I'm dealing with Section 1, says that this $100 million is going to be appropriated from the property tax credit cash fund. Correct? It's mm. not appropriated to it. It's going to be appropriated from that fund. On line 3? Yes. All right. So since we're appropriate, well, line one talks about the hundred million, and line two says it's coming from 
-hmm. that fund. So mm -hmm. before it can come from that fund, it has to be put into that fund. Would mm -hmm. you agree? And we agreed yeah. earlier that that money is going to come from, did you say the general fund? Y yes, no, it would be from the property tax credit cash fund. Yeah. Well, that's where this $100 million is coming from, but where does the $100 million come from that goes into that fund? It would be from the property tax credit cash fund. Would you mind? Department of Property and Assessment Taxation. That is an, an amendment that I have forthcoming. But what I want to know, in order for money to be appropriated from the property tax credit cash fund, there has to be $100 million in that property tax credit cash fund. Is that right, $100 million? There has to be money in that fund, correct? It would be transferred to that fund, yes. From where? From the general fund. One okay. minute. So the underlying bill creates the property tax credit cash fund. Money will be transferred from the general fund into this property tax credit fund, cash fund. And then from that fund, Money will be, will go where? To the Department of it Property will be Assessment? It appropriated and go back to the counties then. Where is the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation located? Is that a state off department or a county off a department? It's a state. It is a state office. Well, you said it would go from this property tax credit cash fund to the counties. But this bill says they, it will go from the property tax credit cash fund to the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. But they will reimburse Senator Chambers, the your time is up. But your light is next. You may continue. Thank and you. Senator Jansen, would you continue to yield? Yeah. Senator Jansen, we're going to have more than one transfer of funds here. Would you agree? The yeah. first will be, and we're using the term transfer just to designate these transactions. First, money is going to go from the general fund into the property tax credit cash fund. Do you agree? Yes. And from that fund, it then goes... To the county. It goes where? To the county. To the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. Is that true? Then they are issued the authority to write the check to the counties to, be, to reimburse them. I thought this language is saying that money is going to be transferred from the property tax credit cash fund to the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. Am I misreading that? Now, it is appropriate and it gives them the authority to spend that. So no money goes to the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation? Oh, they, don't, they don't keep the money. They have to write the check for the money. But here's what I want to know. When that $100 million leaves the property tax credit cash fund, when it leaves it, its next stop is that the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. Is that correct? If I'm wrong, right. just tell no, me. No, but that's where it goes becomes because some agency has to write the check. I understand. I'm not, you're getting yeah. ahead of me. I just want the record to show the movement of this money. It comes first from the general fund to the property tax credit cash fund Yes. And from there to the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. And then if it's going to move to the counties, it moves from the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So the only thing that the property tax credit cash fund does is to be a pass-through agency for that money to get to this Department of Property Assessment and Taxation from whence it will be then sent to the counties. 
That's the way I understand it. And it will be distributed then in accord with the language in LB 367. Yes. It will be distributed by the counties at that point. Yes. Okay. So now we're all right on Section 1. And that's all the questioning I will do at this time. But thank you, Senator Jansen. Members of the legislature, I'm trying to get clearly into the record where this money is coming from. However, where is Senator Langemeyer? He told me he knew everything and he's going to answer questions and I've been stalling and waiting for him. Is Senator Cornette over there? Senator Cornette, are you available for a question from Senator Chambers? Senator Cornette, Senator Friend said he may get loony. Senator Friend, I'd like to ask a question if he would yield. Senator Friend, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? And Senator Chambers, you have a minute 15. Thank you. Yes. Senator Friend, may I borrow a bit of your looniness just for a couple of seconds or so? Depends on which bit you need. Just, just a little bit of it. Yes. Okay. Senator Cornette, I'm calling you. That's all I will use of it, Senator Friend. Thank you. I had been told that other people would answer some of the questions for me, but I don't see them, so I will continue my discussion until such time as they may arrive. Oh, Senator Whiteman will answer. I'd like to ask Senator Whiteman a question. Senator Whiteman, would you yield to a question? I will. I'll try to answer him, Senator. And Senator, I'd like to ask the presiding officer, am I still on my opening? <laughs> this is your first time speaking, Senator Chambers. You have 20 seconds. Is this my opening or the first time following my opening? It is after, this is the first time after your opening. Okay, then I'm going to turn on my light again because I won't be able to continue at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the legislature, senators, friend spoke for such a short time, I thought he was cut off because he's going to stand up here and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with me, and he can't speak his full five minutes or something, so I'd like to ask him a question. Senator Friend, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Senator Friend, yes. I thought I heard you say you, were, you would speak to the amendment. I said I was going to speak to the amendment, but there is no need to because this amendment is going to be fixed, or the uh, LB-367 is going to be fixed appropriately. So these mistakes that everybody's talking about are irrelevant. Is mistakes that who's talking about? You and everybody else. Well, how can they be irrelevant if they need to be fixed? Because we're going to fix them. When you say we, who is included in that, or is that the royal we and it applies only to you? The royal we. So you're going to fix it then, correct? No, I'm just playing a little bit. I know. We, we're, uh, so who, who is included in that we when you say we're going to fix it? There's an amendment 1207, correct? You see it on your gadget? Yes, I do. And there are also, um, it's my understanding, drafting fixes that have to go into place because of the changes that we made on select file to LB-367. I think that's what Senator Langemeyer was talking about, so I didn't really have much more to add. Senator Friend, I don't see 1207 on my gadget. Whose amendment is it? AM-1207? I'm staring at it on my gadget right now. Might need to refresh your gadget. Whose name is the amendment under? Whose amendment is it, 1207? Senator Jansen. And it's 1207? Isn't it? Now I'm asking you because you said it is and you told me to refresh my gadget. Mine gives the number. Maybe, maybe my gadget's messed up. 1295. Well, we'll wait till we get to Senator oh. Jansen's. Oh, no, it's 1235. Sorry. I, mine just refreshed. If you click on you are, it'll show you. We're going to work our way through it when we get to it. But Senator Friend explained why he didn't speak very long. Yes, I, was con I don't know if I was confused or not. Maybe I am now. Well, now is just the time I think I understand you. So what I'm going to do, thank you, Senator Friend, is continue. 
there has been an attempt by those assisting Senator Jansen to outfox me because Senator Jansen is offering an amendment to my amendment. And his amendment is to amendment FA 97. And that's the one we're discussing right now. I'd like to ask Senator Jansen a question. Senator Jansen, would you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? Yes. Senator Jansen, what would your amendment do? What would my amendment do? Yes. All right. Uh, it would strike the contents of the original A bill. It would transfer $105 million from the property tax credit cash fund in 07 and 08 and 115 million from the fund in 08 and 09 to the Department of Property Assessment and Taxation to fund the One minute. property tax credit program found in LB 367. And the first, there's something you have to do before you can do that. What does your amendment do before it gets to that? It would strike uh, the original amendment. And what is the original amendment that's being stricken? Yours. So you're out to get me, huh? Well, I had a good teacher, Senator. Do you think you got me? Don't know. But you will know about uh, we'll know about 1158.9. Do you think we're going to have to go that far before we dispense with the A bill? Senator, that's entirely up to you. Time. Thank you, Mr. President. Chambers. Correct. Mr. President, members of the legislature, this bill is taking a torturous course. I really have no interest in keeping us on this bill until 1159. I have a sheaf of amendments which I could have offered and forestalled anything that Senator Jansen and his friends over there could do. But what they should have been doing instead of trying to match this with me is pay attention to LB 367A and put it in the proper form. They had time to put their amendment up there. Somebody spoke on the bill. And it was said from the desk, which was correct, no amendments were on the bill. And at that time, my light came on, and I put an amendment up there. There was time for them to make a correction. I'll tell you what's wrong with 367A. It does not reflect what is in the bill. You all remember when you were talking about a dollar and a nickel and a dollar? You all remember that discussion and what it entailed? And do you remember what you did? Do you know what you did? Do you even care what you did? But whether you know or care or not, you did something which resulted in the A bill being inaccurate right now because it does not reflect what the bill says. It's not my job to do these things. My job is to be kicked around like a soccer ball like you all think you did when you voted cloture because you wanted to hurry up and get out of here and go over there and sponge off the lobbyists. And I know you're all over there. That's why the lobbyists have no respect for these senators. They can make you leave your job when you're talking about tax policy to go over there and eat some cheap, cheesy food that probably was left over from some restaurant and they said take it to the senators and the lobbyists said won't they get sick I mean the restaurateur said won't they get sick the lobbyists said they can eat anything and they can digest anything because they're full of it and if they're full of it it ain't gonna make them sick when they eat some more of it that's how much contempt I have for what these senators are doing who run over there and sponge off these lobbyists. The public needs to know you're eating off the lobbyists. That's why you're not in your seats. And you're so proud. 
You are the government. You are formulating tax policy. And you left your good friend, whom you told me to feel sorry for, floundering. Because a major error in the A bill was not caught and you all were not here to help him. You leave him swinging, slowly, twisting slowly in the wind. What kind of friends are you? Senator Fisher told you, playtime is over and you all are still playing. And now even Senator Fisher has departed, which she has a right to do. But I'm going to linger on this bill for a while longer. And I'm going to continue talking about the tax policy which is embraced in LB 367. What ought to have been done One minute. was to reduce that sales tax by a half percent. And in, a, in an amendment that I had pending, it was going to contain the offset that Senator Gay was looking for, although it may not have been in the form that he chose. But people were saying, are we going to cut the budget? Are we going to cut programs? Well, I was going to make it closer so that we wouldn't forget what it is that I would be talking about. That a state tax benefit, that be gone. That child care, that be gone. Everything would be gone except the earned, unearned tax credit. That would remain and there would be a half cent reduction in the sales tax. That's what the bill would have done. That's simple. Everybody can grasp it. These bits and pieces that exist in the bill now are not going to substantially benefit anybody and certainly not society as a whole. And it certainly doesn't improve the overall tax structure, the tax system Time. in this state. Thank you, Mr. President. Questions from Senator Whiteman. Certainly. Senator Chambers, I I'm, appreciate the fact that you debated the A bill long enough that we were able to uncover errors, and I think that's laudable. Uh, at the same time, I guess I'm interested in, in knowing where you intend to go with the amendment other than to, uh, to use up the time of the legislature, which is fine also. Could you tell me? where you would intend to go by reducing it to 99 and perhaps you'll reduce it to 104 now that the amount would be have gone from uh, 100 to 105. It might irritate and exasperate some people, but I would like to take some of the money away that's being appropriated for this bill because it's a bad bill. And of course, it's your opinion that it's a bad bill uh, and you're, you're wanting to supplant our opinion with your opinion, I assume. Yes, that's what I would like to do, as is anybody's intent who offers an amendment to a bill. Uh, President, thank you, Senator Mines. Members of the legislature, I'm sure when the new people looked at this A bill, they felt that there's no way to delay this bill for any substantial period of time because they couldn't find a way to do it. Senator Whiteman did acknowledge that the fact that I took the time gave the opportunity for this error in the bill to be caught. Let me tell you, smart Alex, something. If I wanted to fix you and embarrass you, I would have let you go on and move the bill like it is and not said a word. Then I would have ridiculed you. I would have mocked you. I would have taunted you. And I would have told what dumbbells you are and said, I and Gulliver constantly talk to each other commiserate with each other because we have so much problem dealing with these Lilliputians. But I tell Gulliver, he can go home when he wants to. I got to stay here. I've obliged myself to stay here and see it through. Suppose, Senator Gay, I had been a nice person and just let the bill go through with the air. That wouldn't be my fault. I don't have to read these bills. I don't have to correct them. Let it be over there on final reading and let them laugh at me and say, we sure fixed him. Then I might not even tell you and you'd read it on final reading. And you'd have something in a bill that is absolutely wrong. Reading and let them laugh at me and say, we sure fixed him. 
then I might not even tell you, and you'd read it on final reading. And you'd have something in a bill that is absolutely wrong. And I'd laugh then. There, many times, will be more than one thing going on during legislative debate. But people don't listen, they don't pay attention, they don't learn. You know what you new people ought to be doing? You ought to be putting some money aside in escrow so that when I get out of this legislature, it will be recompense for me for trying to do some mentoring for you. Trying to teach you something, but you're hard-headed. When I'm not here, who's going to do this? Who's going to give you a crash course, even if it hurts your little delicate, tender feelings? And you want to tell everybody you're a politician and you're a lawmaker and you can't even deal with what I'm trying to offer you in the way of instruction? Do I have to teach you like a kindergartner and say, look, I'm going to teach you A, B, C. This circle with a straight line on the right side of it is a lowercase a. A is the first letter in the alphabet. Since the line on the right side of that circle is straight, we call that a printed letter. It's printed. Now, if we made the line go down and look like a fish hook when it got at the bottom, that's cursive. That's when you're writing. There's printing and there's writing. This is what a printed A looks like. This is what a written A looks like. Stay with me now. I don't want to lose you. Are you with me? We're on the first letter and we got 25 more to go. Can you lay with me? No. Well, then don't. Is it going to hurt me? Not at all. I won't even be here. And you'll enjoy yourself because nobody's going to call your attention to this. One minute. The public's going to pay attention? No, because they think you know what you're doing. This is that brilliant class of newbies who's going to put all of us old timers with the institutional knowledge and memory to shame. It's going to make us look like fools because we don't know how to do anything and don't understand anything. This is not my legislature. This is not my government. This is not my bill. I'm not a member of the committee. But I'm going to make you pay for making me work. You can't pay me in cash, so you're going to pay me in the form of time. Thank you, Mr. President. Look, we're going to be here anyway. You're not going to accept any of my amendments. So I'm going to do some instructing, whether you like it or not. I'm going to put it in the record. And they're going to say, what kind of people were there that he has to speak in such basic terms? Now y'all are starting to drift back in here. But what difference does it make? There's an Arabian proverb that says, when the belly is full, the head is empty. So now you've got a full belly, your head's empty, but I won't be able to tell much difference anyway. That's the way I can talk to you all. You set yourself up for me to talk about you like this. You don't have any pride. Self-respect and self-esteem are the essentials of making it through this world. If you have self-respect and self-esteem based on some knowledge and understanding, there's nothing anybody can do to whip you or get you down. Why do you think I've survived 37 years over against all the opposition I've had down all these years? There are cemeteries you can go to and find people who were here when I was here, and they are dead. They're now in the stone orchard, and I'm still going strong. Senator Friend's happy up there in the chair because he can rest now and pretend he's working. He is so relieved that he can take that load off his young feet and not have to deal with this old man whom he was going to run into a hole by 8 o'clock. We're not even at 7 o'clock yet. And he's tired. And I'm the one who's supposed to run down. Oh no, this is important work that we do. We make the laws. The 49 of us constitute the third branch of government. People say a co-equal branch, but among equals, we are superior. Do you know why? Because the hand that feeds is the hand that controls, and we control the purse strings. 
We determine who is going to get money, who shall not get money, how much money they shall get. And that's when you make grovelers and sycophants out of everybody in this state from the governor right down on down including the chief justice of the Nebraska Supreme Court they have to pay court to you to get some money and you don't even understand the power of the prerogatives that you have you feel the legislature is subject to the other branches of government and even to these various departments of state you are the ones in the driver's seat Laws that everybody must obey are created by you all. There is no other entity in the state with the authority to legislate. Only you. You are 149th of the most powerful branch of the government. You don't see lobbyists clustered around the governor's door, do you? Do you see them hanging on every word that comes out of a judge's mouth in the Supreme Court down the hall? No. Where do you see tens and tens and scores of lobbyists? Why do you think they spend that time around you? They don't like you. They don't respect you. And when they think you might be worthy of a little respect, they say, we'll give them some of this cheap, chintzy food, and we, we can run them all out of their job to take this cheap food. We know we still got them. One we minute. still own them. We haven't lost anything, and certainly not them. And their eyes haven't come open yet to what they can do. Senator Carlson ought to be quoting to you from old Paul the imposter, who said, I see through a glass darkly. That's the way it was in the early days. I always say that was the first television set. But that's what he said. But then shall I know, even as I am known. You're supposed to grow in knowledge and understanding and competency. That's what you all, as lawmakers, are to do. You formulate policies. You are the instructors. You're the teachers of society. You are the examples. You can either be a good example or a bad example, but you are an example. People ought to sit up in that balcony and leave here saying, I understand now what lawmaking is about and I see why it's so important and I know now why the law is a living, dynamic thing. Time. It's more than those words on the paper. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Chambers, be kind enough to yield to a question. Senator Chambers, will you yield to a question from Senator Ye White? Yes, I will. Senator Chambers, could you perhaps explain what um, the impact of lead dust has been on the children in, in both our districts? Yes, there have been studies undertaken, not necessarily limited to Omaha, which indicates, as Senator White said, that lead affects your ability to learn. It can have an increasing cumulative effect. And as you get older, your abilities in the mental department diminish. And as I've acknowledged on this floor, I'm a victim of having grown up around lead. I know that my mental capacity is diminished. And I know that it is continuing to diminish. And I have to try to do the best that I can with what I have left. But when we know that children are exposed to these circumstances and conditions, and they invariably happen in areas where poor people live, and society is not responsive in handling what is, in fact, a societal problem, the conditions are going to worsen as children do poorly in school. And there is not proper concern about them, so rather than realize that some of this is from exposure to lead, everything is diagnosed as a behavior problem. These are kids who misbehave, they don't want to learn, they don't pay attention, so you put them off in what is called in the community a dumb room. They're smart enough to know that you're making fun of them, so as soon as they can find a way to stop going to school, they stop. But they have no skills, they can't get a job anywhere. So if they can't make it, they take it. The first thing that people will do when they're going to launch into a life of crime is to prey on those who are closest to them. 
They will steal from their family. They will steal from their friends. Then they break into neighbors' houses. They might go to a party and steal something there. Not every child. I'm giving you an example. Pretty soon, that is not enough. So as that song that Elvis Presley sang about the kid who grew up in Chicago, he gets a gun and he goes and he does things with them. He might survive and he might not. He might kill somebody else, he might not. But there are conditions that produce conduct and behaviors. And those behaviors often are destructive, not only to the individual, but to the society. And it will start with those nearest to them. People talk about black on black crime. If you have a Latino neighborhood, Latino on Latino crime, predominates in a white neighborhood, white on white crime, Native American on Native American, Asian on Asian. But since black people are put at the bottom of the rung, the crime that occurs among us at the hands of each other is somehow set apart and treated as though it's separate and distinct and different. Whenever you find people oppressed, crammed into too small a space, you have societal dysfunctions that develop. They've even replicated this phenomenon among animals who are considered social. When they don't have enough space for each one, then the structure of their society, the respect, the order will break down and chaos develops and animals who ordinarily would not fight even will wind up killing each other. So when people are in that set of circumstances, and we know society is not willing to undertake a program to correct it. Those of us in a body like this legislature One with minute. limited means have to deal with the matter incrementally and attack it where we can. So Senator White, myself, others on the floor have looked at the fact that the amount of money that a person has to spend is essential to everything else. Where every penny counts, we should make as many pennies available to those people as possible. The only tax break, tax cut, that will affect the condition of those people is the sales tax. Cut the sales tax and you immediately and automatically improve their condition. I say again to all those who say the sales tax is painless and people don't know whether you raise it or lower it, if I've got high blood pressure and they give me some kind of medication and I don't even know it, my blood pressure can diminish and I don't even know it because I wasn't conscious of the fact that it was high due to the absence of system symptoms. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. President. My time to Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, Senator Aguilar's yield is time. He has four minutes, 56 seconds. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to Senator Aguilar. As I was going to say, anything that can be done to alleviate these problems ought to be done. I am very cynical about a lot of things, especially politicians and the political process. But there is a part of me probably came from my mother. She was a very rare and special woman. When people saw her and me together, they didn't believe she was my mother. She was white in complexion as Senator Carlson. Her hair was as red as the lady who works for Senator Cornette. And as she was growing up, they called her the redhead. She had greenish gray eyes but she was just like me. The complexion would have made her white in the eyes of American society. But as far as her orientation and what she was, she was as black as I am, not in complexion. And that was my mother. She was very gentle, very kind, very intelligent. And I was extremely resentful of the life that my mother was put through by the white people in this country. She could have passed as it's called, but she didn't want to be identified with the people who were so cruel, who were so hateful, who would mistreat her children, who had never done anything to them. 
And if there's a woman who loves her children, don't cross a mother who loves her children. Whether that mother has two legs or four. I was not born into this world with the attitudes that I have. Despite my diminished mental capacity because of exposure to lead, I had sense enough to see what was being done to my mother, to my brothers and sisters, and to me. And when I hear how casually and cavalierly the white people on this floor who can do anything they want to, and often will, no matter whom they hurt, then I resent it. And I'll fight hard to try to stop them from doing it. And if I can't stop them, make it as difficult as possible. All I can take from you is some time. I'm not even like Antonio or whoever the person was who's going to have his pound of flesh. Somebody was listening. Shylock was the one who's going to take the pound of flesh. But when time come to take, came to take it, that's all he could take. He couldn't take blood. He couldn't take anything else. You all want not only my pound of flesh, you want my blood. You want my labor. You want my identity. You want to own me like you own a piece of paper on your desk. And unfortunately, many people of my complexion could not withstand that. And we suffer from it as a community. I won't run from my community. I will not betray my community. I will not desert my community. And I will fight you tooth and nail on this floor. And I don't care how angry you get. You cloatured the bill. You got what you wanted. Well, now you're getting some of the consequences. And I'm going to have some more time from you this evening. One minute. And make you stay here with me, whether you like it or not because I own you. I own this legislature. What you're feeling right now, I made you feel. I'm Stradivarian, you're my Stradivarius, and I play you the way that I want to play you. You think I don't know what I'm doing. You think I don't know what your reactions are. I've been around you in the legislature for 37 years. And again, despite my lead-induced, diminished mental capacity, I operate at a high enough level to understand you all and learn your rules, and I'm playing by your rules. But I'm foolish because I'm trying to teach you your rules and how to use your rules and be successful in a legislative setting. You think you're always going to be on the side that has 40 votes? The Senator Christensen has so much naivete in him that he thinks when he brings up some of the issues to take care of what is called greater or outer Nebraska, Time. that he's not going to be in the mi minority as I am, and he needs to know how to fight. Thank you, Mr. President. And members of the legislature, don't think that because your foot seems to be secure today, and you're dealing with me, and in your opinion, my foot is about to slip, that you have won. You have not won anything. And the position that you perceive me to be in, you will really be in it, and you won't know how to defend yourself. You won't know how to protect yourself. They will run all over you. And you think because you're white and they're white, they care about you. They come to you and clump together with you only because you're against me. You wait till you get in their way. And you're going to tell them, but I'm white like you. They're going to say, sucker, who do you think we get all of our big money from? We get our big money from white people. You're in the way now. Well, I work with you. Yeah, because you're a fool. You should have listened to Chambers, but you didn't. And now he's gone and it's too late. And you don't know how to swim. And you won't learn. You can learn, but you won't. So I'm going to take time teaching you. And I'm going to get my pound of flesh in the meantime. And you're going to legislate by cloture. And I say again, when your editors start ridiculing you because you don't want to take the time to fully debate a bill and you're going to try to fix chambers, and when they write editorials against you and ask you, why do you do like you do, you're going to say, chambers made me do it. 
And then the editor will say, as I've told you, Chambers owns you. You don't have sense enough to learn the rules. That rule book is not thick, but you don't have any backbone. You're sheep. And I apologize to the sheep. I'm using that analogously. But I don't call you anything worse than that, do I? You haven't heard me say that I'm going to stop, I'm not going to stop talking because I have more pearls to cast. And Senator Carlson knows what that's a reference to. But you haven't heard me say that. So we're going to be here together for a while. And as Al Green sang, let's just be glad we had this time to spend together. Be glad. You saw me give for Senator Friend a vote of confidence that you care. Oh, I see him over there. I thought he had left. But since we're going to be here anyway, I'm going to continue talking about the issues that I think are of consequence that are important. And it matters not whether you listen. There are the people watching us who are outside of this chamber. And some of those people can think. Some of them understand. And they know what we ought to be doing. And they know that you haven't defeated me. But I can't just say that. I have to show you. And I'm showing you. But I don't have to keep you here till 1159 on this bill. But you probably think I've run out of alternatives already. But I got to show you for a little while longer that I do have additional alternatives and options and that I will make use of them. So one thing we're going to do, but you can stop me, I'm going to get a call of the house. And you don't have to vote for a call of the house. But if we ever reach the point where there are fewer than 25 people here, one we're minute. automatically adjourned. Because when there's not a quorum, the legislature cannot be in session. So if you think you're going to whip me by staying in your office, when a call of the house is made and fewer than 25 people come here, you just gave me the rest of the day. It's over. Did y'all know that? Well, you know it now. Gave you another free lesson and don't even charge you for it. Senator Friend doesn't know because he's not paying attention. But see, when I say his name, oh, he pays attention then because he cares. He cares. And we care. Now he's rubbing his eyes and putting his eyeglasses on so he can see what's going on. Oh, we're going to have a lot of fun this evening. Mr. President, how much more time do I have? Twelve seconds. I will ask for a call of the House and stop at this point. You're looking at a man who is just like your current president. Did you see that last vote? I am a unifier. But in reality, I had to be not voting so I could move to reconsider. I'm going to be discussing the same thing no matter what is on the board before us. But I want you to see how you use your rules. I'm telling you, you're not always going to be on the long end as you are tonight, as you were when Senator Jansen made you feel so sorry for him that you voted to cloture. Why didn't some of you all look at his A-bill? Why didn't you on his committee look at the A-bill? Why do you put somebody like me in a position to talk to you like this? To talk about you like this? Why? Because you are so puffed up with this false notion of importance. Because you read in the paper how smart you all are. You're going to revolutionize the legislature. And on the big tax policy bill, what do you do? You're out there eating and went to sleep on the funding bill. And you're the smart ones. I'm from the shallow end of the gene pool, struggling, trying to do the best that I can. Forty-eight of you. And I'm going to keep 
rubbing it in. When the A bill came up for consideration, I did not have an amendment pending. The desk told us there are no amendments to the bill. N O, none. I read the A bill. There should have been an amendment up there, but I didn't offer an amendment to correct it because that's not my job. My job is to embarrass you if I cancel you, pay more attention. I asked Senator Jansen a series of questions. Every one of them contained a hint. When we got to section two, I gave the name of the program, then I gave that, they, they call it Teosa, and he said he did not see that listed. So I read again what those letters stand for and asked where the money that was appropriated to that program would go. And what was the program? And he was honest, he wasn't sure. So I said, I see Department of Education. Is that a hint? And still, no amendment. So then I offered more amendments. And I continued to talk and talk and talk. Because I'm dealing with fractious, hard-headed, inattentive, snot-nosed kids who think they're smarter than they are. They ought to be wearing little, Fauntley, little Lord Fauntleroy vests and short breeches and buckle shoes. This reminds me of what I read in a book about Clarence Darrow who is reputedly one of the best lawyers that America produced. And he was addressing a group in Kansas someplace. And the lady was very proud that he was there, very pleased to have him. And there were about 35 people who showed up. But the lady was smart. It was a small room, so the room was crowded. And she said, Mr. Darrow, we're pleased to have you here to speak to this room full of intelligent people. And Clarence Darrow stood up and he said, Madam, there are not this many intelligent people in the world. And nobody got up and walked out because nobody even caught what he was saying to them. They probably thought he was saying they're the smartest people in the world. I'm going to keep laying it on you all because you can do better than what you're doing and you're worthy of something better than what I'm laying on you now. I shouldn't even be able to say this. But see, old folks are entitled to have moods, as I've told you, and I feel a mood coming on. In fact, I'm in the middle of a mood. But the thing that's so great, you can't do anything about me. You can't out-talk me. You can't outsmart me. You can't frighten me. You can't take anything from me. You can't give me anything. I don't want anything from you. What have you got that I want? And if you're going to give it to me, you must not want it. So if you don't even want it, why should I accept it? So that's where we are. Y'all might be here to win, friends, but I'm not. If you can be friendly and I can be friendly, that's a bonus. I think we ought to be civil. We ought to be polite and courteous when we can be. But the main reason we're here is to do a job. And that's first and foremost to fabricate wise and just laws that are beneficial to society. Laws which when they are enacted and enforced make society a better place in the corner that's touched by that law than it was before. And you think 367 as it stands now, with this pitching and patching and a little here for one political agenda and one over there for another political agenda is of any value? What did I start doing a long time ago talking about what a poor product we had given to us by the Revenue Committee? And some of y'all thought I shouldn't say that because I shouldn't be critical of grown people on a committee whose job it is to give us a good product and it's not given? 
If you went to the store and you bought a television set and it didn't have a screen, you're going to say, oh, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I'm just going to keep it. No, you take it back and say, I gave you good money. I want what I paid for. We're making laws. We can't expect a good product from the committees. Oh, we don't talk about each other. We all talk about me. But it's silly to say that grown people have to be protected and cannot be criticized when they don't do what they volunteer to do. Y'all can criticize me. Senator Friend criticizes me the best he can. He at least puts forth the effort. He tries. And I have to give him credit for trying. Look at the condition of this bill. And I'm not going to keep you on this bill till 11.59, I promise. And because my ethics are those of Satan, when I make a promise, I keep it. And I see Senator Shimmick over there, not sure what I'm getting at, but she figures I'm getting at something. So I'm going to tell her, I assure you, I'm not going to keep them on this bill until 11.59. Maybe 11.30. <laughs> Did you tell them that too? No, I'm not going to keep you on this bill that long because there are other fish to fry. Senator Fisher wants to get to her bill, and she'll get you to vote cloture on that. And I will be ruling you again. I will make you cloture for the rest of this day and maybe the rest of the session. But before I can make Senator Jansen vote cloture again and make you all vote cloture and follow him because you're a bunch of sheep, I have to let him get the bill amended the way he wants it amended, don't I? To get what I want, I have to give him what he wants. So who has whom in whose clutches? Senator Jansen's mind is running 100 miles an hour now because he said, I'm going to get what I want. But how? Because I'm going to give it to him. One minute. But I'm going to take a little more time first. I have two more times to speak on this motion. Then I can close. But I won't be through yet. I've got a little more that I must do. Because you all aren't convinced. You don't think I mean what I say. So I have to show you. And I'm not going to find a way like my good friend, Senator Friend up there, to sit down and rest and play like I'm working. He knows that I know him. We have an understanding. And that's why we get along so well. And we'll continue to do that. And you all aren't even going to be able to dislike me to the extent that you want to. You try. But I won't let you, because remember, I'm the one with the bow. I'm the one with Time. the violin. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Chambers. Senator Chambers, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Back to what this bill is about. I'd like to ask Senator Jansen a question or two before I proceed. Senator Jansen, will you yield to a question or two before he proceeds? Let him proceed. Senator Jansen, is this the most significant bill related to the taxing structure and system and rates that has emerged from your committee so far? Yes. And there probably is not another one in committee that is as important and as significant as this one. Would you agree? I would have to. I'd have to go down the list, Senator. Uh, but probably this, yes, this is this the most is important probably bill. the most significant, yes. Thank uh -huh. you. That's all I wanted to ask you. And I agree it is. We are formulating tax policy. And you all, I guess, are satisfied with LV-363. As Senator Whiteman said, there were 40 or so of you who voted cloture and then voted to move the bill. So you think it's a great bill. I bet some of you don't even know how many pages there are in the amendment that became the bill.
I'd like to ask Senator Langemeyer a question. Senator Langemeyer, will you yield to a question from Senator Chambers? You bet. Senator Langemeyer, you're aware that the bill now consists of an amendment that was adopted, correct? That changed the bill, incorporated other things. In other words, the green copy is gone. Correct. How many pages are there to that amendment which now comprise the bill? Are you talking about the committee amendment or, oh, oh, I'm sorry, you're talking about the final product. I do not know right off the top of my hand. Well, how about the middle of your head? That's, a, that's an area we don't want to go to. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. You win that one. At least you win a pass on that one. Members of the legislature, it's really not important to know how many pages there are in an amendment. But be prepared to answer that question if you're part of those who are pushing the bill. And if you ask me how many pages there are in an amendment to mine, I'd say the number of pages is totally irrelevant. Ask me anything about what is in that amendment, what it says, and what it means, and I've got you. And you'll get the answer you want. And you know why I tell you that? Because all you have to do is take the amendment and turn to the last page, and you got the answer to the question you asked me. What you can do for yourself, I'm going to let you do for yourself. What you may not be able to do for yourself, that I will help you do. And if it comes to answering or justifying anything that I put before you, it's my job to respond, and I shall. And there could be a question put to me about my own bill, the answer to which I don't know. And I'll tell you, I don't know. And I'll thank you for bringing something to my attention that I ought to have been informed on, but was not. And you will have improved my education. And I'm not going to resent you for it. I don't resent those who teach me something. When you teach me something, you enrich me. You make me better than what I was. You make me more capable. Why should I be resentful of somebody who made me better than I was? Put me in a better condition to make it through this world successfully. People in this society are not properly educated. They resent the ones they ought to respect the most. They run from that which can benefit them the most. In school, you're taught to slip and slide by. Teachers, administrators, and systems, Senator Adams, are allowed to continue and encourage this kind of slipshod education by letting school districts set up their own basis for testing and assessing what the students are doing. And One their minute. intent is not to establish that the students know something, but to make the administrators and the teachers who view the students as a source of income make them look good. So the kids come out as dumb as a post. They send me letters which they've printed. They run uphill, downhill. They can't spell. They don't know where to put a period. They don't even use periods. Everything is like one long sentence, and they don't know that they're doing anything that's not right. They're doing what they're taught in these schools, and yet the school systems are great. One kid told me how good the grades were that he was getting, and he should have been failing if they were going to help him. But he should not have been failing because he should have been taught better than that. But he was not taught. And that carries through into adulthood, and I see some of it playing out on the floor of this legislature every day. Thank you, Mr. President.